It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Coach Andrew Rohde, who is in his second season with the Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats. Coach, the Wildcats coming off another big win, another blowout win, as a matter of fact, against a team coming in that looked like it it was going to be a, a, a closer matchup, uh, at least uh, from the perspective of the score of the game. Indiana Wesleyan 56, Taylor 7. Uh, like I said, another big win. Talk talk about this game and the win against your intra county rivals. Um, yeah, well, thank. Uh, I mean, first off, Joey, thanks for letting me on. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to just kind of talk about our team. And um, you know, it was a great game uh, on Saturday. Obviously, the rivalry is is big between us and um, and Taylor. Uh, you know, I think, it, like you said, it was a little bit of a blowout win. Um, yet, I think. Uh, uh, you know, the, Taylor not being at full strength was a little bit tough. I mean, both their quarterbacks were out, so they were on their third guy and kind of, you know, they had a bye week to get some things fixed and worked out with, you know, the, the quarterbacks that they had. But, you know, that team was not at full strength. And so I think, um, you know, the score is even a little bit misleading in terms of the talent and the quality of a football team that Taylor is. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's just if anybody loses a quarterback, um, you know, it's tough to be – at full strength. And then when you've lost two in two weeks, that's just, it's really tough. But I mean, our, our guys came up and they played really well. And I think we did what we should have done, uh, you know, going against a team that was a little bit, um, you know, missing some of their guys. Uh, so I'm really proud of our guys, our defense, you know, in spite of all that, the option stuff, it doesn't matter who you've got back there. The option stuff is challenging to deal with. And you've got to have a pretty disciplined defense to, to stop that. And, you know, Taylor came down and kind of punched us in the mouth uh, in that first drive. And um, and our guys kind of – it took them a drive to wake up and kind of get into the flow of things. And uh, so credit to them that after that first drive, they just – they allowed Taylor to do very little um, against our, our first group of defense. But really the whole game, they didn't do a whole lot. Um, and then, uh, you know, offensively, I thought we played well. Uh, I don't think we played great. I think we left a lot of things on the table. We missed a lot of passes and drop balls. Um, so I think there's more that we have the capability of doing offensively, but, uh, but overall it was, I think we played well, um, in the game. I appreciate your perspective on that coach that, that, that goes a long way toward the, the overall, uh, outlook on the game and, and what the team then continues to work on. Of course, it's bye week this week. We'll talk about that a little bit later on Indiana Wesley in 517 yards of total offense. Uh, Taylor 147. So both the offense and the defense, at least statistically, uh, doing what they they came to do. And and in light of that, I mean, the the wins lately have just been mounting. And it's seven and one on the season so far. But uh, another big win was the the game before, and I know people are still talking about that one. 77 to 21 over Marion, uh, perennial power, and uh, you all just came out and again took care of business for for that game as well. Yeah, that was, um, you know, that was a, 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 a Marin's a great football program. I mean, historically, they've done some incredible things. Uh, and so to come out and have our guys, you know, play the way they played. Um, and again, that was another another game that offensively we came out and played well. Um, yet defensively, we gave up a touchdown. But then once they kind of settled in, it's like they couldn't do anything against us. Uh, but that is a very, very talented team. And when you look at their roster and who they have on their 2D, that's it's still a really good football program, but I think that showed us a little bit of what our capability is as a team, um, you know, in that our offense scored, you know, 10 touchdowns in the first 10 drives and defensively, once we kind of got through that first drive, they really didn't do anything. And I think, um, you know, Keegan LaBelle, uh, that running back is an outstanding running back. He might, I think he might be the best running back in the conference uh, and their offensive line is big and they got great tight ends. Um, so the fact that our defense shut that group out for the most part uh, was was pretty incredible. Coach, I know we previewed the the team at the start of the season, and just to look at, at both sides of the ball, at kind of a, a, a midseason reflection now, uh, led by Kyle Antoine on offense. He This last week was 22 for 33 passing, pretty good completion ratio, ratio there at uh, 67%, 192 yards passing. He did what he needed to do, three passing touchdowns and no interceptions. Yeah, you know, I think uh, as you've watched his progress through the season, I mean, I mean if, you, if people have been following the se- uh, following our season, I mean, you just, you see him getting better every single week. And I think 
um, particularly that Marion game, it started to kind of turn the corner of his ability to be efficient within our offense. And this game wasn't, he wasn't very efficient. So, you know, he's still got a long way to go uh, in terms of his consistency, but, uh, but he's playing better every week. Uh, really proud of him. But I think uh, what has also made him so good is Arjun Lothi, um, who played against Alvet Nazarene, threw five touchdowns, broke the records that Kyle set early in the season. Um, Every game Arj has come in uh, that he's been able to play, I mean, he comes in and is a uh, higher completion percentage, uh, more efficient, um, and he's done an incredible job. And so those two guys are both pushing each other uh, and, and making each other better. And um, so we got two guys back there that we feel really confident in. Uh, and I think that is just uh, an incredible blessing uh, for us to have two guys that we feel really good about. And coach, to continue that thought too, when when you have two guys guys like you were just mentioning there, and have stability in the backfield as well, Ryan Whitwell, among a number of other backs, by the way, too. But I mentioned him to to get the conversation started, as he had 17 carries, 145 yards rushing touchdown against Taylor, but he's averaging 120.1 rushing yards per game for the season, good enough currently for third in the NAI. Yeah, Ryan's um, Ryan's been playing better and better as the season goes. And, and I remember we talked in the summer, we just kind of didn't know exactly what we we're going to get. I mean, at that time, we had gone through spring ball um, and a little bit of our summer stuff. And, you know, you just you don't tackle much. And so you don't get a full picture of how good our backs can be. Because I think between Ryan and Roosevelt Cage, we've got two big backs that are tough to tackle um, for, uh, for negative yardage plays or anything that's uh, less than four. And so... Both those guys have done a great job. Ryan particularly has been um, a guy that puts us consistently in second and medium to short and third and short situations, which has allowed us to be pretty efficient on third and fourth down uh, as we're going for it. Uh, and I know he's he's playing well. He's third in the country in terms of yards per game. He's got a lot of touchdowns, but you know, having Roosevelt Cage uh, and having him be able to step in and be an even more physical back, a more downhill back, uh, that guy finishes really well. I think at one point uh, in like four of the first five games, his first carry he took for a touchdown in every game. Uh, <laughs> kind of a funny statistic, but but it also shows just kind of the power that that guy has to run through tackles. Um, so the combination of both of those guys together um, has been really good. And Elijah Gibbs hasn't played a lot for us yet. He's kind of been getting it at the end of the games, but he's – Missed a lot of training camp due to some health uh, issues, yet he is starting to kind of come back. His speed's coming back. His feel is coming back. And so I think he's going to be a third piece to that backfield that adds a whole different dynamic of speed um, that uh, that we need right now. Coach, I know that the that, that Vegas odds don't uh, really go into the NAI, but that sounds like a fun prop bet as to whether or not uh, you're going to get a score on your first t- first carry of the game since he's done it so many times. That uh, that would be interesting. We're visiting now with Coach Andrew Rohde from Indiana Wesleyan here on Midwest Sports Net. Wildcats 7-1 on the season. By the way, I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate that. Algorithmically, I have no idea what it does, but it does help us and uh, become a member as well. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, looking at the defensive side of the ball really quickly now, too, because – Clearly, the defense has done its job, too, uh, against some uh, powerful opponents. We've already talked about a couple of them. I know for over the course of the season, it, they've held up. All-conference performer Clayton Mosier, uh, a solid day on Saturday, 11 tackles, one and a half TFL, and uh, one of those, part of that, a sack as well. And he's now set the program record for tackles. Got 234 to his tally right now. That I actually didn't even know that, so that's pretty incredible. Uh, I mean, Clayton has done an unbelievable job all season. And I mean, just, you know, highlighting a couple of things beyond his statistical football records and what he's meant to this program on the field. Um, Clayton also just got named about two or th- maybe it was about three weeks ago. Uh, he got named as one of the finalists uh, for the Allstate Good Works team. Um, so he's going to get to go to, to go down to the Sugar Bowl and get an award and um, and be a part of that whole thing and be a part of the parade. And uh, they're going to take care of him. Uh, and, uh, and he'll get recognized as one of, I think, like 20, 22 guys um, that are a part of that uh, from all levels of football all around the country. Uh, so he's just done an incredible job um, of making an impact in this place off the field in addition to what he's done on the field. But, yeah, he's, he's had an awesome season. He's a difference maker in our defense. So having him healthy, uh, having him play um, this season has just 
he he changes um, our defense, and that's that's a guy that you. It's really hard to throw the ball into the field, and it's even harder to run the ball into the field um, with that guy out there. So he's done an incredible job, and he's been part of an unbelievable defense so far. So here's, and I forget. I think it was like going into the Saint X game uh, about three weeks ago. Um, our defense had given up, I think it was 37 points, yet they had also scored 37 points, um, <laughs> which was just like, I mean, I've, you hardly hear of things like that. Um, but they had basically tied the first five opponents uh, from a score standpoint just by themselves. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're playing great football. Uh, I mean, Luke Bay's sitting in the middle uh, as our middle linebacker and just making a lot of the calls for our defense, putting our guys in really good positions. That guy is playing outstanding football and setting our defense in a position to be really successful. I mean, he sets a really physical tone to it. And then Preston Sykes kind of on the back end, um, you know, at that safety position between him, Bay's, and Mosier, that crew of guys just makes it a nightmare to run the football against them. And as we create, you know, a defense that kind of turns offenses one-dimensional and makes them, uh, you know, have to throw the football and offensively score pretty early, pretty often. And when teams are getting behind, they're just starting to say, hey, we've got to throw the ball to catch up or to play um, at this level of football. You know, having Neil Campbell out there shutting down uh, receivers and Davion Turner and Vance Shepard, both those, all three of those corners have played just tremendous football. Uh, and I think right now we're leading the nation, or at least before this last game, we were leading the nation in interceptions. Um, and then uh, on top of that, having a, having a pass rush with Anthony Cheeseboro, who is pretty high in sacks, Garrett Hathaway, Kayla Williams, Robbie Hunter, I mean, that crew of guys, they have done a great job of both shutting down the run and then flipping it around. And as teams are throwing, I think, again, before the Taylor game, I think we're leading the nation in sacks as well. Um, so that, that defense, man, it is uh, it is a nightmare to play every day in practice uh, against them. But it's also something that I think has uh, helped our offense grow uh, and helped some of the young guys on our offense grow, like Kyle Antoine and Arge and Isaac Smith and, and a lot of those young guys. They have grown up so fast because of what they get to see every day in practice. Coach, bye week right now. What's bye week like in Marion? I always enjoy that question because it's it's different across the country. Yeah, it. Um, well, we're uh, we're halfway through Monday on bye week, and it's already been uh, a lot more restful than what most uh, what most bye weeks are. We took yesterday off, uh, so we had a Sunday off, which was great um, for our coaching staff. And then, you know, we're in, and we're obviously working hard today and kind of getting after it. But we'll recap the game this afternoon. We'll practice a few times this week, um, a little bit lighter. We'll get some of our young guys into practice a lot more and really try and uh, boost up the young group. Um, and get those guys going uh, a little bit more and have some pretty physical uh, yet fun and competitive practices. Uh, and then I think everybody's looking forward to Friday, uh, which we'll practice early Friday morning. The guys will lift afterwards. And then at that point we come loose. So they've got uh, Friday afternoon, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And so we're hoping that we can walk back into this upcoming week as we get ready to prep for Concordia. Um, uh, really, really mentally, uh, emotionally, and physically rested uh, as we walk into this last stretch of Concordia, Santa Heights, and Lawrence Tech. Well, I I appreciate that, and and again, you you just mentioned it. So you talked about the the closing to your schedule, regular season starting to wind down. Two of those three games at home, including Concordia, once you get through the bye week, November second, uh, the uh, Cardinals in their swan song season picked up a, a pretty big win last weekend, and so. Uh, I know even though it's the final season, you're not looking ahead to anything. Now, from my perspective on the media side of it, yes, we're talking and we're looking ahead to saying, hey, the Wildcats look like they're putting themselves in a good position for playing in November and, and possibly beyond. But I know you're, you're taking it one game at a time. So tell us a little bit about that Concordia matchup. Um, you know, so I've, I've seen a little bit of film on them. I haven't watched much of their defense because you know just the way film works, we've watched a little bit more of our, their offense. Um, and I think uh, – you know, it hurt them a little bit early in the season. They lost a bunch of their quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, so I think they had a little bit of a challenging start to the season, just trying to revamp their offense with new quarterback. That guy gets hurt, revamp it again. New quarterback, he gets hurt, revamp it again. And so um, I think kind of as you see them progress, though, you're starting to see a little bit more of continuity and they're starting to figure some things out. So they've got some really good football players still. I mean, Seager to Gaynor, 
at receiver. They got some running backs that are really good. And I think that quarterback, as he gets later and later in the season, um, especially after this last week, I'm sure he's got a little bit more confidence. Um, he'll probably be walking in pretty confident against us. And so I think it's going to be a huge challenge. Uh, and then defensively, you know, Josh Schumacher does an unbelievable, you know, him, Matt Strazikowski, that crew of guys, they do an unbelievable job with their defense. Um, I think it's one of the defenses that gave us uh, the most fits and the most problems last year. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be the same this year. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a real challenge going against those guys just because of uh, the quality of coaches that they've got over there. Wildcats 7-1 and one now. It's bye week again in Marion, Indiana, Wesley, and three games left in the regular season. But again, putting themselves in a solid and a strong position to be looking ahead to the second season, though, Coach Rody, I'm not putting any words in your mouth. I know you're taking it one game at a time. So I appreciate you taking the time to visit with us today. A couple of big wins. It has been a great season so far for Indiana Wesleyan. And Coach Rody, thank you for telling us a little bit more about it and giving some more insight then on the Wildcats here in 2024. Uh, open invitation always here on the summit on Midwest Sportsnet. We appreciate you, sir. Awesome. Thanks, Joey, for having me on.